Welcome back. Well, in the eyes of Israelis, the formula, formula of the Oslo Accords was land for peace. But at the very time Israel signed the agreement, it was building and expanding Jewish settlements in the West Bank on lands the Palestinians were hoping would become part of their future state. Well, Palestinians saw this as undermining the spirit of the Accords. That could undermine the possibility of a Palestinian homeland. From the viewpoint of the settlers, no matter how much land was given to the Palestinians, the two sides weren't moving closer to peace. In fact, more Israelis were killed in the five years after Oslo than in the previous 15 years combined. Now, while, while outposts continue to grow to this day, never has a new settlement been constructed until this year. Now, I went to Amichai, the new home of dozens of Jewish families evacuated from the illegal settlement of Amona in 2016, to hear the perspective there around the impact of the Oslo Accords. Take a look. It's Friday morning in Amichai. Avichai Boaron, his wife and seven children, one of some 38 families now living here in the first new Jewish settlement to be established in 25 years. It's our destiny to be here, to build, to live, to laugh, to learn, to, to, to grow up. It's our, it's our home. The memories of this moment are still painful for the settlers. Families who established the outpost of Amona in 1996 pulled from their homes two years after Israel's Supreme Court deemed it illegal, ruling that it had been built on privately owned Palestinian land. While the freezing of settlements was never included in the Oslo Accords of 1993, the premise of the infamous agreement is what Avichai says is to blame for the struggle between Israel Israelis and Palestinians. It was very hard. In one hour you, you're at your home and uh, one hour later you cannot come to it, you cannot go to it. And two hours later a uh, big machine come on your home and just destroy it. For 14 months, most of the evacuee families lived in these tiny dormitories in the nearby settlement of Ofra, as negotiations continued with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He told me, but 25 years, the state of Israel don't build a new settlement. So I told, me, I tell, I told him, it's about time. Meantime, in Amona, this is now all that remains. Completely deserted, still, legal obstacles mean it's not yet possible for any private owner to come and claim it. Do Arabs not have a right to the land? No. They don't have national rights in the land. They have private rights, OK? Everybody can live here in peace and quiet, OK? You want to live here in peace to get your private rights? Ahla. OK? <laughs> Perfect. But if you uh, dream about national rights, no, no way. The only nation that's going to live here is the Jewish nation. Why? Because this is our homeland. As simple as that. The wave of terror that came in the wake of the agreement also feeds into the settlers' defiance, the view that Palestinians are looking to conquer all of Israel. They said to themselves, he, look, we, 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 we reach Judea and Samaria, the Jews are going to go from here, after that we'll get Jaffa, after that we'll, go, we'll, we'll take a, a Tzfat. We doesn't have any other place to go. And if you're not going to be strong and tough, we're going to lose this struggle. That perspective is not shared by the international community. Settlements like this one continue to draw fierce condemnation the world over, who see them as an obstacle to peace. This is the Jewish state. There's not going to be Palestinian state. Forget it. The community here sees itself as paving the way for something more profound. It was just seven months ago the first trailers were installed here in Amichai. And as you can see, construction is still ongoing, but a significant amount of infrastructure has already been established. And it might not end here. The state is now looking for this settlement to triple in size. This place, Amichai, the new settlement that we're living in, we're living in, that we're building, that we're sitting in, 
draw a line from, the, from Tel Aviv through Ariel, through Shilo and Eli, and now Amichai and the Jordan Valley. It's a, a line of Jewish settlement that prevent any chance to build a Palestinian state. The hope, Avichai says, is that the dozens of families already living here will grow into the thousands. At what cost? All costs I can give. My life. A pause while Avichai reflects on one family member who will not be part of his growing community. His brother-in-law, Erez, killed in a terror attack on the notorious Route 60 that runs the length of the West Bank. We're not going to give up. This is our chance to live as a people. We don't want to give our life on it. We want to live. But we, if we have to die for it, we will die for it.